Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer podcast. My name is Deb McBride, and it is Sunday, October 4th in the year 2020, and I am broadcasting from lovely Escazú, Costa Rica. And today we had a big astrological movement. So the planet Pluto went direct from retrograde today at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time and 7.30 my time. And... This is, you know, an annual event. Pluto goes retrograde about five months out of the year. So half the population has a retrograde Pluto when they're born. And today, Pluto stationed direct. So this is important for so many reasons. Um, One of the things that we've been watching is how the planets are going to change direction the ones that are in Capricorn, the three that have been in that cluster, Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto. And this is the last of the three to go direct. So on September 12th, we had Jupiter go direct. On the uh, the 29th, that was the other day, we had Saturn go direct. And today, this morning, we had Pluto go direct. So this is very important because the situations that we have been living with all these months, you know, they came together, those planets all came together earlier in the year and Saturn and Pluto came together in January. And I've said this practically every week, all year. (laughs) And when we now move forward, and I really felt this push forward today. I really felt the energy move today because... This is the last of the big three that are sitting in that one spot of the Zodiac. Now, that's a lot of energy in one little cluster of the Zodiac that is creating havoc (laughs) Um, and transformation. So on the one hand, it's transformation, and on the other end, it feels like havoc. But, you know, there's no transformation without some havoc. So So the two have to go hand in hand. And so we are now moving energy forward. And even though Mars is still retrograde, you know, until mid-November, all the other Capricorn planets are now shifted forward. And the important thing about this is that, you know, even though Pluto takes many years to go through an area of the zodiac or one sign, all of the uh, energy that's been focused in one area, it's like like been a gang in a neighborhood and now the gang is breaking up because Jupiter and Saturn are moving forward and moving, getting ready to leave Capricorn. So they're, they have a destination now. They have a new destination. They're not just hanging out in the same place with Pluto. They are leaving the neighborhood and they've got a new destination and that destination is Aquarius. And so one of the things that's going to be very important over the next months is between now and December, when those two planets enter the sign of Aquarius, um, they are going to start giving us the flavor of their conjunction. And Pluto now has moved forward. And so the, the Lord of the underworld, the secrets, the things that lie underneath behind the scenes, under the earth, everything moved forward out into the open. So all sorts of things have happened in these last few days, and certainly politically people are paying attention to things and how the, uh, you know, things are going in the United States political climate. And one of the things that we do need to pay attention to is the difference between Aquarius and Capricorn. And Capricorn is conservative and Aquarius is revolutionary. And Capricorn is, you know, where Saturn rules and rules in a way that is, you know, makes us pay attention to the patriarchy and obey the rules. Aquarius breaks the rules. And Saturn used to rule Aquarius. Um before they discovered Uranus. But Uranus is the revolutionary and Aquarius is the revolutionary. And so there are lots and lots of uh, revolutionary things ahead once those two planets enter Aquarius and that's going to be December. So in the meantime, 
there's the flavor of the two of them coming together. Now they're not together yet. They, they haven't gotten really close to each other yet. And they will really start to come close together more in the month of like the end of November, once the holiday season starts and we get into December. And, but the actual exact conjunction is in Aquarius, not Capricorn. So what's going to happen is you're going to feel some Jupiter and some Saturn simultaneously. And my new blog is up and I wrote it. I sent it out this afternoon and you can go to my website, goldenastrologer.com and click on astrologers thoughts, which is at the bottom of the landing page. And you can read my blog and it is about what I'm going to discuss. So you can read more in depth about that. What I'm about to say is, okay, we've got a blending. Whenever there's a conjunction, whenever two planets come together, there's a conjunction and there's a blending of the energies. We still have one more conjunction of Jupiter and Pluto that we've discussed earlier this year. And so that's going to happen in mid-November, just about the time that Mars goes direct. So there's going to be some lots of stuff going on in November. And But in the meantime, Jupiter and Saturn are getting ready to come together. And Jupiter is all about abundance and bigness and expansion and, and movement in a big way and grandiosity and philosophy and beliefs and optimism and travel and ex- uh, just expanding your mind, expanding your waistline sometimes and expanding your horizons and expanding your belief system. And Saturn restricts. Saturn holds back. Saturn does not expand like Jupiter. Saturn is almost the opposite. They're almost opposites, but they work together. And Saturn, where Saturn restricts, Jupiter expands. So, you know, Saturn is very much about ruling and rules and following the rules and government and patriarchy. And Saturn in Aquarius is a little more revolutionary, but it also um, brings us serious tone to the revolutionary. So if you have something that you're trying to break free of um, and constrictions and restrictions and all, Aquarius is the way to go. But what we're going to feel, and it's like blending two, a mixture of two flavors. You know, imagine you're making something like a salad dressing. You've got oil and vinegar. They're very distinct. Oil is smooth on your tongue, vinegar sharp. Imagine what you're doing. You're putting two flavors together. You're mixing two herbs together. Sometimes there's, you know, a little basil, a little oregano. You've got back and forth between those energies. When I've mixed essential oils, it kind of initially it's like that until they meld and they come together. That's what Saturn and Jupiter are going to feel like. Saturn is going to make us feel like we can't believe in anything. Everything that is, you know, not in front of our face, concrete in our hand, is going to feel false. Jupiter is going to say, no, 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 no. You have to believe. You have to have faith. And Saturn says, there's no reason to have faith. I don't see anything. I don't believe it. I can't see it. I cannot um, really reach out and touch it. So therefore... Why should I believe it's going to be true? Saturn is reason. Saturn is, you know, I, a tangibility. Saturn is conservative. Saturn is not going to expand. It's going to contract. Saturn is where we fear, where we have our fears that we need to confront. And we do the work to confront our fears. So as Saturn leaves Capricorn and goes into Aquarius, we start to think the Aquarius part of our zodiac houses in your horoscope, in your chart, there is a place where Aquarius is and whatever house that is, is where Saturn is going and that's where you're going to confront your fears. And Jupiter is going with it for the ride. But Jupiter is saying, you got to believe in it. You've got to believe that A, you can undo your fears and anxieties here. B, I'm here to protect you. And we are going to work through this together. And Saturn and Jupiter are going to work together through the sign of Aquarius, wherever it lands in your, in your chart. Now, what Saturn is saying is kind of the opposite of what Jupiter is saying. Jupiter is saying, you know what? You have to believe. You have to believe in something that's bigger and grander than what's in front of your face. 
that there is that there is a universe and that there is a grand plan and that there are universal forces speaking through you and coming to you and you need to have faith that this is going to work out and you've got to not worry about it saturn is the part of you that's going to worry saturn's the part of you that's not going to believe saturn's the part of you that's going to say nah that'll never happen Jupiter dreams big. Saturn doesn't dream. It keeps things small and conservative, and it's a, it's not the risk taker. Jupiter's more of the risk taker. Uranus is a risk taker too, obviously. But Saturn says, okay, if you're gonna conquer your fear, then you then you know it's the weird thing about Saturn is if you do take the risk to conquer your fear, then you usually work out your fear. And you have to face your fear. And Jupiter's going to help you face your fear. So, you know, say you've got, oh, you've got fear about money right now. Because a lot of people do because of what happened in this year. Maybe people lost their jobs. Maybe people don't have as much work. But Jupiter and Saturn are confronting the area of money, for example, in your astrological chart. Which could be the second house or the eighth house. And what happens is Saturn is saying, oh my God, what am I going to do? I have no money. I got to get, I got to make money. And Jupiter comes along and says, don't worry. We're going to do it. We're going to figure it out. We're going to work hard because Saturn works hard and we're going to figure it out. And so this is the flavor of the next several months. And for a while, you're going to be alternating between fear and that Saturn and expansion and belief and faith. So on the one hand, there is no faith. There's no reason to have no faith. There's no reason to have faith. On the other hand, there's all the faith in the world and you've got to go there and believe it. You have to. Because what is faith? You know what? We all believe in something. You know, kids believe in the Easter bunny and Santa Claus and the tooth fairy. And, you know, that's fine. And then they, then they get hit with Saturn <laughs> and they start to not believe anymore. But... But it colors their childhood and it gives them hope in some way and optimism that, you know, there's going to be something under the Christmas tree, that there's going to be something under their pillow when they lose their tooth, that, there, that there's going to be a basket of chocolate on the kitchen table when they get up in the morning, <laughs> you know, um, at Easter. So there's, there's all this. And... But Saturn is cynical and Jupiter is optimistic. And so we are going to be moving between cynicism and optimism back and forth, shaking the two flavors in the, in the bottle of oil and vinegar and saying, what, what can I do? What can I do to, to work through this? And the answer is to really be optimistic about working through your fears, going deeper, trusting your inner knowing. There's a part of you that knows deeply within yourself and you have to go there. You can't ask the whole world. You've got to go inside, ask yourself, think about it yourself and keep touching your own inner knowing and uncovering what lies within you know what, what what is sitting inside you that knows that your your intuition is guiding you to and Saturn says you got to work hard at that intuition in, in some ways in some ways you know intuition just comes and you just blurt things out and you just know things Saturn says I really don't trust that Jupiter says I completely trust that so we, here we are back and forth between the two planets and this is what it's going to feel like and it's going to get hotter and hotter as we approach December. There's no way that we're going to get away with one or the other. We can't completely disregard Saturn because on some level we really don't know until we see it in front of us. And on the other hand, we can't disregard Jupiter either because if we just believe in Saturn, it's just there's going to be something gnawing at us internally that says you can't do this. You can't just believe that it's no good and there's no, there's no rainbow after all the hard work. There's no pot of gold. You work really hard and nothing happens? No, 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 no. So 
So this is the flavor that we're dealing with. Now, Pluto went direct today, and this is the transformation one. This is about the underworld, the lord of the underworld, and it's about what comes forward out of the last five, five and a half months. What have you been doing these last five and a half months? What have you been building? What are you looking at that is giving you a transformative view? So did you do something today or have you done something in these months that has been an important transformation in your life and where is it taking you? And it was important to confront transformation, even though it's difficult and letting go and there's like a death involved. The important part of this is to get through it so that you don't, you know, believe that transformation is impossible, that no one ever changes, that life never changes, that's the same old, same old. You have to dig deep within and that's metaphorically what I did this morning. Um, a young man and I that I hired that uh, works on our property, he, I got him into my garden this morning, bright and early. And he had a machete and we cut out, and he really did the cutting and I did the, the gathering of the debris. Of, um, he cut out a dead tree. And this is what Pluto does. It wants us to prune out what's not, alive in our life anymore, what no longer works or what's in our way. Now, this big bunch of dead tree was entangled with vines from another tree. And this was a lot of work for this guy. And bless his heart, he got up on a ladder and he pulled all these vines out. And, and I watched him this morning and it took him, you know, two hours, but he made quick work of it. It could have been, it would have taken me all day, but he just went whack at that tree, that dead stump and everything just fell out. And now the sun can reach my garden. Literally the sun is now reaching this huge section of my garden that could not be reached before because of this mass of dead branches. That's Pluto. <laughs> You know, we didn't pull it out by the roots, but it was already dead. So we just pulled out all the dead tree branches that were probably dead for years and got them out of the way and got the vines out of the way. And how how impressive he was when he did all of this and how impressive it was for me to see like all this work, this incredible space open up and that's good feng shui and good energy and the garden feels completely different that's transformation so i had this major transformational moment this morning just whacking everything out and i clipped here and there and we filled lots of trash bags and that's that's another thing pluto takes out the trash <laughs> and this is a huge metaphor and we got rid of this big wad of you know dead stuff that was blocking the sun blocking the life force. And now I was able to move the trees that really need to be in full sun. I had them in pots and I moved them over right into where they're going to get lots of sun now. And there was a lot of shifting around and stuff of things, but my goodness, what a transformation. And so this, I literally had this transformative experience that was blocking the light that now the light has come in. And I feel completely different after this. So Take a machete to your garden, <laughs> metaphorically, symbolically, emotionally, take a machete and chop away what doesn't work in your life anymore. And that's what Pluto asks us to do. And we've been working in this garden and chopping things away for months, really, because it's been the big COVID project, you know, get into the garden and, and do it. And it has been an amazing evolution. And that's really what... Um, what this has been for me and each of us has gone through something and what what has it been for you what where has the transformation occurred where has have you cleared the debris to let in the light because when we deal with pluto we go into the depths of the darkness and we shine our flashlight remember the flashlight into the debris into the darkness and pull it all out and we come out into the light. And this is where it's so important.
for us to connect with the light. So now Pluto is out in the light. Pluto is up into the upper worlds and we can move forward in light. Now, that doesn't mean that it's all going to be sunny. That means that whatever was lurking in the shadows is now going to come forward. And so we have to decide what we're going to do about it as as the information comes forward, as the darkness reveals itself, we must confront it, you know, and each of us has darkness. We all have darkness somewhere. I can assure you, and each of us needs to confront that darkness and work now with these planets that have all gone direct, Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto, and confront whatever it is that's in our way, and confront our fear and allow Jupiter to show us where the fear is and where we can can clear it away. This is where the important work really, really happens. So that's what you're going to start doing. And so as Pluto moves forward, and it is a collective planet, and Saturn moves forward, and Jupiter moves forward, we're going to hear more things about how this pandemic is, is evolving, whether um, it's going to be resolved soon, whether we need to have more precautions, whatever's going to happen. Now, Jupiter and, and Saturn are going to move into another sign, and they're going to move out of the neighborhood that where the pandemic has been. And so there is going to be a shift of energy for sure once December comes. And, you know, you always feel Jupiter and Saturn before. So, you know, we're going to start feeling this probably November, early December. And we're going to get more answers that we did not have all year. And I think that that's what we're all looking forward to because that's what we need now is we need those answers. And we need to know what's, we're still, we're still in the unknown. But we're clearing away the debris so that we can get to some real answers. So whatever is not working, whatever is holding you back, whatever has been a thorn in your side, a dead tree in your yard, and now it's time to get rid of it. And um, wherever your energy is no longer going, this is where you need to um, get, get through it. Now... In the meantime, Mars is still retrograde, our friend Mars, and he was, you know, Saturn stationed direct last Tuesday, the 29th, and Mars was squaring him, and that meant that Mars and Saturn were kind of duking it out, and if you were in a bad mood last Tuesday, well, you were not alone. There were lots of people that we had to confront some anger, and we had to clear some anger last week, and this week... On Friday, Mars will square Pluto. Now, remember back in August where Mars went to each one. It went to square Jupiter first, squared Pluto, then squared Saturn. Now we're in reverse order. It took a month away, and then it squared Saturn last Tuesday. This coming Friday, the 9th, it's going to square Pluto. So Mars and Pluto are, they're kind of friendly because they both rule Scorpio. Mars was the traditional ruler before Pluto was discovered. So this is really where we want to do some more housekeeping. And now it's interesting because Mars Mars squared Saturn as it was stationing to go direct. Now Pluto is stationing and it's moved forward and it's going to be stopped, not moving very far in these next few days. And Mars is going to hit that too. So that's extremely powerful. And watch your temper. <laughs> be careful. Don't blindly get into an argument. Remember, Mars is retrograde and starting an argument right now is not going to help or solve anything. Um, Mars will reach Saturn again, but it's not going to be in the next couple days. Remember, it's going to hit Pluto first, Friday the 9th. And then, you know, we deal with Mars and Saturn, um, you know, after that. And that won't happen. I'm sorry, we dealt, dealt with Mars and Saturn already. Jupiter is what I'm talking about. Going in reverse order again. So it was originally Jupiter, Saturn, Um, Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, and now it's Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter going reverse. So we've done Saturn. We're going to do Pluto this Friday, and we won't get to Jupiter with Mars till the 19th. So we've got 10 days in between. In the meantime, this week, you will feel Mars heating up to Pluto and just deal with it. You know, be, be careful. 
Don't get aggravated. And remember, it's re- it's revealing something to you. So what is it revealing? And it might be revealing someplace where you're still angry about something that happened in August. It might be revealing something that you need to transform and work on, which we all do. And it may be revealing something, a place where you feel you need to, uh, you know, you want to explode, but it's probably not a good idea to explode, but you can diffuse the explosion by working through it. Mars is action. You know, even though it's retrograde, we just don't like stop taking action. We still get up in the morning. So, you know, this is where you have to kind of diffuse the energy a bit. And this is, this is another interesting week where, you know, Mars and Pluto are going to meet. So they're, they're, connected to one another but this is a strong energy so be careful how you use your energy be careful with the machete (laughs) i'm glad we did that today and not friday but we'll we'll work through this you know we're all going to work through this together and it is about remaining in your own power standing in your power do not let someone take your power away from you do not give your power away stand strong and stick to your guns if you need to And that's what Mars and Pluto are about. In the meantime, on Wednesday the 7th, Mercury is going to oppose Uranus. So Mercury's in Scorpio now, and so it's a little spicy, as I was saying on Instagram the other day. And it's a little prickly, a little sarcastic, and it's opposing Uranus, the planet of brilliant and genius. And so what we're having happen is that we've got this Mercury, the communication planet, and he's chatting with Uranus and they're in opposition and they don't necessarily agree, you know, but there is a part of your thinking that needs to shift. And there is a part of your thinking or communicating that needs to probably expand a little bit, be, be bigger and bolder and brighter, but also you need to be very aware of how you use your brain and your energy and your brain and your thoughts. So use them in an innovative way. Expand your notion of thinking. Tap into the quantum field. Tap into limitless possibilities. Tap into your own mental capabilities and limitless mind. And if anything can show you the limitless mind, it's Uranus, Mercury and Uranus. So tap into your limitless mind and be expansive in your thinking. And that, that's a really good use of that energy. Venus will make a very lovely aspect known as a trine on Saturday the 10th to Uranus. So Venus is going to be gearing up for a trine to Uranus as Mercury is opposing. So Venus is going to allow you to get really creative with this. So it's actually something very Um, creative and interesting and allowing you to use the energy wisely and creatively and limitlessly. And then next Sunday, the 11th, which is already the 11th of October, um, the sun will square Jupiter. So now remember that Mars is going in reverse and it's doing the reverse thing. And, you know, it's, you know, it was Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto. And now Pluto, and now it was in reverse Saturn and Pluto and now Jupiter. So the sun is going, getting involved in this action because the sun is in Libra. So the sun in Libra makes a square to planets in Capricorn and it will make its first square to those planets on Sunday the 11th at 9.35 a.m. Eastern time, the sun squares Jupiter and it will start to make its journey, um, you know, getting involved with, Pluto and Saturn and, you know, everybody before it leaves and goes into Scorpio on the 22nd of October. But in the meantime, we're really having that sun square Jupiter and that's expansive. So that's, that comes at the, around the same time as Venus trining Uranus, because that'll be 7 PM on Saturday night. And then the morning of the 11th, you know, the Sunday sun will square Jupiter. So this is, this is very, you know, expansive energy. So we like this. In the meantime, the moon will be in Taurus today and tomorrow. It goes void at 2.41 p.m. on Monday afternoon. Eastern time, it stays void until about midnight um, Monday night, which is like three minutes after midnight. It's going to go into Gemini, so which will be 10 p.m. for me. And then it's in Gemini all day Tuesday, all day Wednesday, 9.57 p.m. It goes void 
Eastern Time on Wednesday the 7th, and then doesn't enter the sign of Cancer till 11.45 a.m. on Thursday. So we still have a void moon when you get up in the morning. And then it goes into Cancer, stays in Cancer all day Thursday, goes into Cancer, stays in Cancer on Friday. Uh, Saturday, the moon will be void at noon Eastern Time and stay void till 8.24 p.m. when it goes into Leo. And it'll be Leo, Leo from Saturday evening the rest of the weekend. So, but that moon in Cancer on Friday, once again, is another heated moon smacking into those Capricorn planets. So, what's going to happen between Saturday, Friday and Saturday is, you know, you're going to start feeling the revving up of the moon in Cancer. So, it's going to oppose Jupiter. And then Saturday, it's going to oppose Pluto very early in the morning and at noon. That last aspect before it goes void is going to be opposing Saturn. So, you know, this is all going to be going on while Mars is squaring Pluto. So we've got an action-packed end of the week. So pay attention, stay focused, be willful, but not, you know, aggravated and willful. Just be, hold your ground. And remember that you're going to be feeling like, on one hand, what's the use? And on the other hand, I can do this and I can confront my fears and I can, you know, I can pull myself out of this and there's going to be some very interesting astrology. Things are moving. Things are moving. Even if Mars is retrograde and then Mercury is going to go retrograde in a week and a half, it doesn't matter. We've still got movement going on in the heavens and we still have to work with that. So remember the alternating feelings of belief and non-belief, faith and absolutely no faith. That's Jupiter and Saturn. You're going to start feeling that. Pay attention to it. And that's about it for this week. My name is Deb McBride. This has been the Golden Astrologer Podcast. You can find me at thegoldenastrologer.com. You can find me on Instagram, the Golden Astrologer, Twitter at Deb Astrology. And if you'd like a session with me, you can book it online through my website. And this podcast airs on Sunday evenings. And I invite you to listen every week. Thank you so much. For listening a pleasant pluto station direct to you gratitude to every one of you and gratitude um, ongoing for listening thank you